Hello, church. Hello. I've been attending the annual conference of our California Pacific Annual Conference for the last three days, and I love the way our bishop greets the congregation every morning. She goes, hello, church, and they respond, hello, church, right? And then she goes, good morning, saints, and they go, good morning, saints. And then she goes, good morning, sinners. And they go, good morning, sinners. So let's do that. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Good morning, saints. Good morning, saints. Good morning, sinners. Good morning, sinners. And I'm glad we recognize that we are all sinners here. Welcome to the First United Methodist Church of Thorns. And remember, whether you are a saint or a sinner, and wherever you are in your journey in faith, this is home. You're always welcome here. Happy Juneteenth. Juneteenth is tomorrow, June 19, 2023. And I'm sure all of you know the meaning of that. And also, happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to fathers, grandfathers, father role models, everybody who serves as fathers. Just a few reminders. Uh, if you have your mobile devices with you, tablets, cell phones, whatever, place them on silent mode so that we don't get distracted. And, oh, I just remembered. I asked the, fa the pastor earlier this morning, Pastor, how do you say Happy Father's Day in Korean? You know what he said? There's no Father's Day in Korea. <laughs> I don't know if that's true, Pastor. Pastor, a lie. Okay. And if you have prayer requests, place them uh, or write them down on the pink cards that you see in the pew racks. Hand them to the ushers and they will get to the pastor. Or if you're tuning in live on Facebook or YouTube, Write them on the comment section and we'll get them to the pastor. And with that, the peace of Christ be with you always. Let us pass the peace of Christ to one another. And to prepare ourselves for worship, Please join in the responsive call to worship. Welcome. You who are called as disciples of Christ, is anything too wonderful for our God? We remember the goodness of God who promised Abraham a multitude of descendants and then showed up at Abraham's door to announce that the promise would be fulfilled. We remember the compassion of Jesus who noticed the distress of his neighbors and acted to bring them healing and wholeness. We remember the invitation of the, the Spirit extends to us to join in God's work of compassionate community building. As we worship, may we receive the promise, the compassion, and the invitation to be disciples of Christ who join in God's work of making disciples for the transformation of our households, our community, and our world. Because nothing is too wonderful for God. Amen. Now please rise as you are able for the singing of our opening hymn.
Please be seated. Children, please come forward. Welcome. How you doing? You doing all right? No answer? That's fine. Hi. Okay, before I start the, the message, anybody who didn't get the present last Sunday, raise your hand. You got it. Pencil pouch. You didn't get it. Didn't get the pencil pouch. Okay. Let me give you. Okay. Excuse me. Okay. Here. You know, this is gift from my mom. So, can you pick one? Okay, you can pick one if you want. Can you put back in? Oh, no. <coughs> sure. You didn't get it, right? Okay, so you can pick one. Okay, you can pick one. See, coming to church is a good thing, right? <laughs> okay, you can get a lot of good stuff. All right. So your school. Your school over yet? Yeah. Finally. <laughs> wow. What? You didn't get it? I'm sorry. Here. Okay, thank you. Okay. So you're excited about summer break? <laughs> Not really? Oh, okay. <laughs> That's not the answer I was expecting, but anyway. <laughs> so, when, uh, during the school, what's your favorite subject? Oh, come on. Math? When I was your age, my, guess what? What's my favorite subject? <laughs> Lunch? Okay. My favorite subject is exercising. What do you call it, this class, name of the class? PE. -E. Yeah, PE. -E. That was my favorite subject. You know why? Because I studied too hard sitting on the de desk all the time. So that's the only time I, you know, go out and then do some exercise. That's why the, my favorite class is PE. Can you believe it? They don't believe it. <laughs> okay. So my point today is we need to move our muscle, right? You cannot just uh, sit on a desk all the time, then you, your body, what, what happened to your body? Your muscle kind of get weak, not able to move, not able to run, not able to lift up heavy things, you know? Not able to do the good sports, right? So you need to exercise. Spiritual side too. You need exercise on spiritual side. 
how can we exercise our spirit? Huh? Learning about God? Yeah. That's a typical answer. Yeah. Yeah, reading the Bible. So since your school is over, what are you going to do during the, all this summertime? Summer camp? Okay. Do you know we're going to have a vacation Bible school, July? Yeah. That's one of the good exercises we can do during the vacation Bible school. So just, uh, you know, you don't have, please don't travel the week of, you know, vacation Bible school. Okay? You need to stay here and then come to vacation Bible school. Promise? Promise? No? Yeah, okay. Anyway, so I'm thinking maybe we can memorize Bible verses as an exercise, spiritual exercise, every Sunday. Can we do that? You don't want to? Okay, it's a really not really long verses. It's a really short one. Can you read it? All right. So a little bit louder so that, you know, they can hear you. Okay. One more time. One, two, three. Okay, can you memorize it? It's a really simple, right? You can memorize this. It's easy, right? Memorize it, right? Okay, let's memorize it. One, two, three. Rejoice in the Lord always. Philippians? Okay, thank you. I'll check next week. <laughs> if you still remember. Okay? Okay, let, let us pray. God, we thank you for uh, our children coming to our church uh, this morning. God, we always pray to you that you are with them and you bless them with your spirit. We are living in this chaos world, but guide them with your spirit. Especially guide with our parents here who nurture them, guide them. So, God... Be with all these family members and bless them. Thank you for the, all the blessings and guidance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Now you're ready for the next one? Yes. Stand up. So, good morning, church. So, today is Father's Day, and in honor of Father's Day, we are going to be singing to celebrate all our dads, granddads, and uncles. And everyone here will be saying something about their fathers, and I'll be the one to start. So, my dad is very strong and respectable. My dad is good at teaching. My dad is good at working. Dad is good as picking up food. My dad is good. <laughs> My 
dad's a police officer. Oh. My dad is smart. <laughs> My dad is good at cooking. My dad is cool. My dad is great. My dad is strong. My dad is a hard worker. My dad is very smart. My dad is caring. My dad is kind. My dad fixes things. My dad is loving. My dad is funny. Test. Okay. Can all the dads please stand up? And granddads. I'm serious. Oh, 
Okay. I thought they were going to give you a high five, but okay. Right? I'm confused. That's not what I was told. Okay, at least one. Hello, church. Uh, okay. I know school's over and, uh, you know, because, of, you know, summertime begins and a lot of people travel in, but we're here. We're here as a church to worship. So praise God, and I'm really grateful for all of you. Okay? A few announcements first. Uh, this Saturday, what's going to happen this Saturday? Yeah, we're going to have an outreach lunch. So... Uh, 11 o'clock, we're going to serve lunch. We're going to serve lunch. But this time, uh, because of we, we have like a limited cook, a chef, so we're going to order a uh, box lunch to provide the lunch to the community. So would you, uh, I mean, you, you can come to help us, all the, you know, Packing, uh, you know, all the arranging and all that. So please come. And I especially encourage youth groups, youth members, our church. It's a really great opportunity for them to learn about love, actually practice the mission and the love that we're supposed to do. So I really encourage our youth members to come for our lunch this Saturday. Okay, you're not really enthusiastic about it, right? <laughs> oh, come on, don't drain me this morning. <laughs> Yay! Okay. Mom, mom is watching, so. <laughs> okay, uh, vacation Bible school. We set the date. We set the week of July 24th. So it's going to be evening uh, with that which we usually do. So we need a lot of volunteers, uh, we need teachers, we need uh, your support. So uh, please let us know how you help for Vacation Bible School. You know, our mission statement focusing on what? Next generation. I remind you. Our church's mission statement, our church's focus should be the next generation. Teach them about faith. So this is really a centerpiece of our education program, Vacation Bible School. So like, I wasn't really joking when I was uh, talking to children about you know, staying in Torrance during the week of Vacation Bible School. But we all have to arrange, set a schedule, and then bring all the children, not just your children, but you know, children in your neighborhood, to come to church, and then we're going to have a great time uh, vacation Bible school. Amen? amen? Okay, you said amen, so. Okay. Any other announcement I missed? Yes. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Any other announcement? So let's move on to joys and concerns. Any other joys and concerns? We have a, a prayer request. Uh, Ernesto Udarbe. A uh, brother of our family passed away uh, June 15. So pray for the whole family members. Right? Thank you. And uh, update on Didre. 
Deidre is still in the hospital. And uh, according to the plan, she's supposed to go to rehab center to start rehab, but uh, she's still in the hospital. So uh, continue to pray for her. And uh, we have uh, some other church family members uh, getting uh, treatment and, uh, you know, cancer treatment and some other treatment. So we need to continue to pray for our church family members. Right? Last Tuesday Bible study, I mean, I'm not really preaching, so calm down. <laughs> Last Tuesday, we talked about being present. As a Christian, as a child of God, we need to be present to each other. You know, it's not just, a, oh, I'm thinking about you. Actually, being present in the spirit, in the emotion and feelings and the physical, being present to each other when our church family need your presence, your support. And a prayer is the best present, best way to be present. So that's why I ask you to don't forget Pray for them every day. Can you do that? Okay, thank you. Any other joys and concern? Yes. Mimi is here. Yeah. And nephew John is here too. Welcome, welcome. Abby is here. Abby. <laughs> Any other joys and concern? My dear Korean clergy colleagues here, Reverend uh, Eunyoung Ko from uh, South Desert Conference. So, <laughs> all right. Okay. Any other joys and concerns? I don't know why it's so quiet, but okay. If it's a good thing, then let's keep it quiet, okay? Okay, let us pray. Eternal God, we come to you again this morning. God, you gave us this promise, the promise of you are with us all the time. God, help us in this church, your presence, your guidance, your encouragement, your empowerment. God, this morning we lift up to you, our church family members who are going through this really hardship of their lives. Many of them going through all this treatment, very aggressive treatment, oh God. Be with them. Provide your strength your comfort to them. Be with all these family members trying to support them. Be with all these medical staffs. Provide the best medic medicine for them too. God, we know you are almighty healer. So we come to you, O oh God, and ask you to provide your true healing upon all these struggles that we have in our church families. God, you built this church for your purpose. Help us to be your true church, the church that doing your mission, the church that support each other, love each other. Empower us with your spirit so that we can be really good church that you are pleased. God, we ask you to continue to bless us and guide us and empower us in our church. Let us continue in prayer with the prayer that Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those trespasses against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom and the power and glory forever. Amen. The ushers come forward, please. Today's offertory music is Marshall. In honor of Juneteenth, I am singing uh, hymn 519, Lift Every Voice and Sing. This song is known as the Black National Anthem. with the wine of the world we fall. 
please join me in the prayer of dedication. Mighty God, with your powerful arms, hold up your church. We are struggling through tough times in our churches. We need to be renewed again and filled with your power. Reach inside us and open hearts wide that we might give the full measure of our devotion. As you revive the saints who came before us, revive us to go out and welcome the forgotten. Heal the sick, speak the words of comfort and hope to the discouraged. In the holy name of Christ we pray, amen. Our scripture reading for today can be found in Hebrews chapter 12, verses 7 to 13. It's in our New Testament Bible, page 227. Endure the trials for the sake of discipline. God is treating you as children. For what child is there whom a parent does not discipline? If you do not have that discipline in which all children share, then you are illegitimate and not his children. Moreover, we had a human parents to discipline us, and we respected them. Should we not be even more willing to be subject to the father of spirits and live? For they disciplined us for a short time as seemed best to them, but he disciplines us for our good in order that we may share his holiness. Now discipline always seems painful rather than pleasant at the time, but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Therefore, lift your drooping hands and strengthen your weak knees and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be put out of joint, but rather be healed. The word of the Lord.
church say amen. amen. Yes, indeed. You know, I'm, I probably told you about this, but choir is represent of all of you, right? So f- when choir is singing, praising, we all singing together. So that's why we need to say amen, right? So let's practice one more time. Let's church say amen. amen. Okay, thank you. Instead of sharing with you this morning with our humor, I would like to share a Father's Day prayer which I found on the internet, which means I'm not sure about copyright. Okay, so here's the prayer. We pray today for dads, new dads, granddads, stepdads, adoptive dads, solo dads, boldly one, beardy one, skinny one, cuddly one. Don't look at me. (laughs) Dad who can, who tell bad jokes. Dad who dance to YMCA. Dad who know how to fix things and dad who just pretend. Fathers to the fatherless, we pray for those whom for whom this day is sadder than it is happy. Those who feel they have failed, those who are grieving children they never had, those missing their dead or their children even more than usual. Father God, in a world where some deads are distant, absent, or even, even abusive, we lean into your ever-present love. We know that you are especially faithful to those orphaned, abandoned, and hurt, that even if my father abandons me, the Lord will hold me close. Father of comfort, heal our wound. Restore the dignity, integrity, centrality of fatherhood in our nation. And finally, Lord, for all those poor souls everywhere who forgot that today is Father's Day, we ask you to bless them in your abundant grace and manifold mercy with the discovery of chocolate and a half decent card in surprisingly well-stocked convenient stores. Amen. (laughs) Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Yeah. So, how should we celebrate this special day? What's your plan? I mean, thinking about all this special day, how we celebrate, the ways that we celebrate, I'm kind of really fascinating to see how, you know, we people celebrate different ways on a special days. Compared to Mother's Day a month ago, I don't know what you got, but at least you got flowers. Some of you had a nice lunch together with your family. Some of you probably get like a diamond necklace or something like that. (laughs) The Father's Day, however, high five. (laughs) Okay, I'm okay with it because I know Our generation has a certain concept of a father figure. 
this father figure have been changing a lot last decades. Don't you think so? Looking back in the past, maybe 10 or 20 years ago, we had a different father figure in our society. We have a strong pillar of the house, strong hard work fathers, but media these days created this somewhat wrong figure of father especially in the United States. Father of making mistakes all the time. Father with, you know, wrongfully lazy to, you know, postpone, uh, lay out all this work, hard work at a house. Father with, uh, you know, love bacon. I don't know what's wrong with the loving bacon, but <laughs> all this unwise figure. Our father figure has been changed a lot. As a father myself, I'm okay. I'm, I guess I'm okay with this negative uh, perspective, projection of father figure. But we need to change it. We need to restore our father figure in our society. I heard it not too long ago. I'm not sure it's true or not, but in case of emergency, there is a certain order of people to rescue. Have you heard that? In case of emergency, first, to be rescued would be what? Huh? No, pregnant women. Pregnant women, followed by children. And then, women. And then, pets, dogs and cats. <laughs> And then men. <laughs> In a way, I'm okay with it because, you know, man has muscle. I don't have it, but man has a muscle <laughs> to help people to escape from the danger. So I'm okay with it. But when I, when I think about all this negative projection of the society, how society treats our fathers these days. It feels like fathers these days have somewhat insignificant value in our society. So we need to restore it. My brothers and sisters in Christ, our father needs your encouragement. Amen. I'm telling you, fathers these days being treated somewhat insignificant. That's why fathers need your encouragement, encouraging words. You know, think about this encouraging word, how encouraging this word could change father's life. This ever, especially when father... This father figure is wrongfully somewhat twisted in this generation. Used to be household, head of the household, right? Used to be the pillar of the house, but not anymore. That's why our fathers need encouragement. Don't get me wrong. I'm not really saying that our fathers or even men should be treated high level of respect. Maybe distant level of respect. I'm not really asking to be extreme, exalted father figure. 
Let's treat our fathers like fathers. Let's treat our husbands like husbands. I truly believe that we need to change or restore this concept of father figure. And please, don't fall the common culture, the common culture that created by this media or society. One of my favorite verses in the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 2. Do not conform to the pattern of the world. Do not conform the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good and pleasing and a perfect will. Think about it. We call our creator God, Father. Even our Lord Jesus Christ called God as Father. Don't get me wrong. I share with a Bible study group using pronoun about God is strictly purpose for our own understanding. In the Bible, described as a, a God as described as a father is for our own understanding, our understanding about God. It's not like God is a male figure or a female figure, but we use God as a father. We call our creator God as father. Jesus Christ called God as a father because the father figure that God originally intended. Think about it. What would it be like the father figure that our God was originally intended? And all we call God Father. Do not conform the pattern of this world. We need to conform to the will of God. My brothers and sisters in Christ, we are living in this age of generation of confusion, not knowing what is right or wrong. Many parts of our world, we don't have sure what is right or what's wrong. Not just the concept of the father figure. There are so many areas that we don't know what is right. Do not live, we are, we are living in this world, we're broken. Somewhat, there's no respect, ignore, contempt. Maybe that's the norm, became norm in our society. For example, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 and 2, it says this. Apostle Paul said this. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. For this is right. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. Apostle Paul identifies severe brokenness of the relationship between parents and children. Severe brokenness in household. Not just in the past, but these days. Within the family, within the community, that's why he said, for this is right. Obey your parents, this is right. Honor your father and mother, this is first commandment with a promise. 
my brothers and sisters in Christ, we need discipline. I truly believe that we need a discipline. Personally, my concept of father figure are related to discipline. My father taught me how to believe, how to live out as Christian. Not just uh, in a church setting, but in my day-to-day life setting. So we need a discipline. Without discipline, we are losing the strength of faith. In verse 7, Hebrew chapter Verse 7 said, endure trials for the sake of discipline. God is treating you as children. For what child is there whom a parent does not discipline? Because God loves us. Because God wants us to have a strength. That's why God discipline us. We need a power of faith to live in this world, in this broken world. That's why we need a discipline. In verse 9, moreover, we had a human parents to uh, discipline us. And we respected them. Should we not be even more willing to be subject to the fathers of spirit and live? For they discipline us for a short time as seem the best to them. Discipline should be the best for us. He disciplined us for our good in order that we may share his holiness. We need to continue to discipline ourselves and our children. Last week, the message was based on Psalm 23. Can you find the discipline message in Psalm 23? Psalm 23 is addressing the reality of our temporary home here on earth. The reality described somewhat harshly. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, King James Version said, even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Here's the discipline message that we can find in Psalm 23. We need to discipline ourselves, not lose focus on our eyes on shepherd's rod and staff. Doesn't matter what challenges we have, we need to keep looking our shepherd rod and staff. So they comfort me. We need to keep looking at the rod and staff, which will lead us in the right direction in our lives. My brothers and sisters in Christ, we need, like I share with our children, we need to develop our spiritual muscle. We need to continue to develop, exercise our spiritual muscle. Because when difficulties and challenges arise in our lives, you know what happened? We panic. Not able to understand, think clearly. Our vision suddenly became narrowed. Not able to think, not able to see clearly. What we used to think clearly, when everything goes well, there's no more when difficulties and challenges shake our lives. But you know what? Because discipline 
because we discipline ourselves, even the difficulties and hardship, we are able to not lose our focus on God. As we celebrate this special day, I really pray that this morning we will listen to the word of God who discipline us not to be swept away by the pattern of this world. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for the message you have given us this morning. Many times we don't know what to do. We are too relaxed. And many times we feel like we are okay. But when challenges hit us, when difficulty arise in our lives, we panic. We don't know what to do. That's why you encourage us with this message of discipline this morning. Help us, God, to continue to exercise our spiritual muscle so that we can hold your hand strongly enough even in the middle of the storms. Thank you, God, for your presence and your guidance in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Would you please stand for closing him? <laughs> As you go from this place, go together and trust that when we follow the joy of God's call into the unknown, God will equip us, empower us for the work ahead because nothing is too wonderful for God. God the Father, 
and the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. Thank you.